Okay, so in the spirit of universally designed instruction, um, I decided to make a video about the visuals that I'm going to send you all. So you'll have a screenshot of these visuals. I'll make PDF copies for you all so you can physically print them out and then you all can reference the video. So what I recommend is that you pause the video now um, you get your desktop or your laptop in front of you. Um, so either, either you can look um, at two screens, toggle two screens, and then have a notepad or sticky notes available. So the heart of the IEP is the present level of functional performance. So everything else with the new forms up until this point is the same as what you all are used to doing. This part it is where... It gets slightly different than what we're accustomed to because it's going to um, fuel the disability related needs, um, the effects of disability, which we'll continue to call the impact statement for fidelity purposes, and then which also fuels the writing of the goals. So the present level of performance, um, as I said before, they should be written as if another teacher were to pick up your IEP would they know where to begin in all subjects? So if you were to switch IEPs with another special education teacher in your building or another special education teacher um, in the district, would they be able to look at your students' present levels and know, you know, in the bare bones where to begin with them? Um, in order to do that, there's three things that you look at. What can my student do? Um, how does it measure and how does my student compare to others? How does my student compare to others? Um, so the first thing, what can my student do? Now it doesn't have to be limited to three things, but it does three things is, is what you should at least have in order to have a strong present levels. So this is an example. Trené is able to Decode up to three syllable words. That's one thing. She can read 80% of grade level sight words. That's two. Um, Trené struggles with fluency, which affects her ability to answer WH questions 50% of the time when reading independently. That's three. As you notice, the third one is where we talk about the struggle. So the first two, what can she do? The third one I'm focusing on, the struggle. Because let's say Trené is in second grade now and comprehension um, becomes a big thing, especially when you move into third grade. You're no longer learning to read, but you're reading to learn. So I'm focusing on the fact that she is still struggling with fluency, but the big thing is that the fluency affects her ability to answer WA questions 50% of the time. Now this is highlighted in orange because it brings you to the second part. Well, how does it measure? So I can't just simply say that she struggles with fluency because struggle can mean a lot of things. Like what does struggle mean? Struggle looks differently. So like you said, if I handed it to another teacher, I want to be specific. Um, it affects her ability to answer WH questions 50% of the time. So if I give her a test with 100 questions, she's only getting 50 right. If I hand her a comprehension test, they would never have that many. With 10 questions, she's only consistently getting about 5 right um, when reading text independently. You will later use this to create your goal. So right now with that um, piece of paper or with that you know Word document open with that notebook, I want you to copy and paste. Good job. My daughter's over here. Good job. I'm gonna put your socks and shoes on, please. Um, I want you to take that and write it somewhere else so that you can transfer it to your goal, okay? So, I'm gonna, this is gonna be like my goal page. So I said struggles. So I'm going to write a note, struggles, with fluency, 
Um, effects. I don't know if it's affect or effect. Effects. Ability. Effects. To answer. W H questions fifty percent of the time. Okay, so this is going to be goal. Okay, so we're going to come back to that momentarily. Just wrote on my wall. Okay. <clears throat> so, how does it measure? So, you will later use this to create your goal, which is why I took time to write that in a separate area. The third thing is, how does my student compare? So, this can be using the STAR test, PALS, other universal screeners, um, in addition to the common core standard statements. So students at Trinae's grade level should be able to ask and answer questions to demonstrate comprehension. So that gives me a clear comparison of how my student is functioning and compared to her grade level peers. Where, where are your boots? You don't want to wear your black boots? Okay. I have to just pack them in too. No, pack your tennis shoes in case we're wearing black boots to school. Is that okay? Okay. Um, so students at Trey's grade level should be able to ask and answer questions to demonstrate comprehension. So then I'm linking that to Common Core in addition to these standards. So I'm continuously comparing how my student is doing compared to other grade level students within the district. So those are your present levels. I personally recommend working through one subject matter at a time. So if I'm focusing on reading, obviously I'm going to have reading, writing, math, behavior skills. Um, but if I'm focused on reading, I'll go through the entire IEP, not the entire IEP, but I will focus on those main areas of the IEP, meeting disab disability related need and goal for one subject. So in your mind, you can continue to have that continuity. So now that I've identified um, Trinae's present levels, now I can go over to her disability related need. And of course, it's not going to work flawlessly for me. But that's okay. Okay? So you're going to. Go back to present levels and look at the area you need to wait. You're going to go back to the present levels and look at the area you identify as a struggle. We just did that. The area we identified as a struggle was that Trinae struggles with fluency, which affects her ability to answer WH questions. We also wrote that as a placeholder because it's gonna come back up when we talk about our goals. Let me straighten this out. Okay. So, they say ask the five whys for, um, but for these purposes, I feel like you can answer three questions. So, what is my, why is my student not meeting grade level academic standards? Why do they have difficulties accessing grade level instruction? And what is actually giving my student trouble? Okay, so that is the disability related need. So we identify that Trinae struggles with fluency and answering WH questions. Why is that? Why can't she function? We established that she's not functioning like her grade level peers in this area, but why? So is it, what disability, what disability is it? Or how is that disability rather manifesting? So is it that the student is not able to multitask? Is it a lack of organizational skills? Is it delayed progress in processing information? 
Is it difficulties attending to tasks? Is it struggles with self-regulation skills? Is it impulse control? A plethora of things. Now, if you're um, a speech pathologist, the disability-related need may look different. It may be more um, direct, like student um, students has a, a clep lip and therefore cannot um, formulate you know, a certain sound or the student is not able to produce the rolling R sound. So if you're a speech pathologist, your disability-related need may not manifest itself like this, but it may be more specific. But if you are a, a teacher and your student um, has OHI or um, EBD or anything like that, these are things, not, I'm not saying that it's going to look like that, and I'm not saying that you take and you only use things off of this list. I'm just giving you an idea of look at what it looks like. If you're sitting down and looking at your baby, what is what is he or she doing that is causing them not to access the curriculum? Are they not attending? Are they not um, controlling themselves? Are they not organized enough? So that's a disability related need. And then you put that into a statement. You do not have to use this statement. This is a statement that was given um, to us in training that I feel like is really helpful in order to keep these things straight and in control. And I recommend using this until you get comfortable with creating these statements yourself. So the blanket statement is student needs to build skills in blank, name the skill, so they can blank statement related to disability. So in this case, it would be, I need to put it into the screen a little more, I apologize. So this thing will be, Trine needs to build skills in impulse control, okay? So that she can attend to reading instruction, improving her comprehension. Because remember, we go back to the present levels. What was it? She was not able to answer WH questions. That's a comprehension thing, okay? So you notice how I just put in order for her to attend comprehension statement related to disability. I don't need to say Trine needs to build skills and impulse control that she so that she can. Um, and you don't need to necessarily repeat it exactly how it is in the present level. I don't need to say so that she can. Um, attend so that she can answer WH questions 50% of the time. That is where a lot of people are getting confused at. That um, specificity goes into the goal, okay? Disability-related need, what is causing my baby trouble, and, and, what, and in what is it affecting her academics? So it's affecting, I already identified the present levels that it's affecting comprehension. I was very specific there because I need to use that to make my goal, but it is indeed simply comprehension, and that's all that I need to put in this disability-related need statement. Okay? Now, we have made our way to the goals. So we have a disability-related need. We know why Trine is struggling. We know what she's struggling in, and now we're going to make a goal. Okay? So I know... Because I copy and pasted, I took it exactly from the present level, so I know that everything is going to line up with fidelity. So now I just have to create a sentence. So my goal. So the goal would be reading. Okay. And if I'm numbering it, this would be goal number one, reading. And I would say, Trine will improve her ability to answer WH questions when reading and D and 
complete. That's my goals. So if I was to physically copy and paste, I would copy it from my present levels and paste it right into my first goal. You see, I left this part out, okay? Because in the new forms now, underneath the goal, you have an A and you have a B. So my A, it says, where, what is the baseline? Well, I have to be... I have to use fidelity with my present levels. The baseline is right now 50% of the time. What do I want to get her to what do I want her to get to? The goal has to be attainable, but yet ambitious. Well, I think we can get her up to 70%. Because I know my student and I know what she's doing. And I know the work samples that I'm going to keep. And I know her ability level. And you're done. You know, you're done. And so then you're going to go and you're going to repeat these steps for math, for writing, um, and for behavior skill if your student needs to. So to me, attacking each area at a time, attacking each subject area at a time, and going through those three pages is going to help you. So I hope this helps you. I will get those um, these screenshots to you in addition to um, PDF copies so you can print out and keep um, for your own records. I recommend making a binder of these resources. Um, and then when you get your first IEP done, one that I will make sure to thoroughly check, you can have your own example or exemplar of what it looks like so they can help you as you go through all your IEPs for this year. Thank you all so much. For all that you do, and I hope that this was helpful and beneficial to you. Yes, you can say bye. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> Go get dressed.